Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to another live broadcast of Amen. Consuming Fire Ministries International, where I am the pastor and the founder, Apostle Jarvis Hines. And I want to welcome you on this day, which is we know as Resurrection Day. We know that Jesus got up. If Jesus didn't get up, you and I wouldn't be up right now. So I'm grateful for this day. This, this is I call our birthing day. This is the day where we have got life and life more eternally. I want to welcome all of you to another live broadcast on this day known as Resurrection Sunday. I'm excited about what God is going to do in this place today. I want to first of all give a shout out to all my family and friends, my Facebook family and friends, and all of our covenant partners who are watching us in different time zones, different states, different countries. We want to welcome you today. You could have chose to be anywhere, but you decided to join us on this virtual day of Resurrection Sunday. And I'm excited about what God is going to do today. Amen. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited. Man, I just want to welcome you all once again. I'm excited about this day. This day is very exciting to me personally because this is the day that our Lord and Savior risen from the dead. And not only did he arise, he's still alive. And he's alive in you and I. All of us who have accepted him and believed that he is Lord and Savior, we have been born again. He has resurrected us from dead, the penalty of sin, and given us eternal life through the shedding of his blood. And I'm just grateful today. I'm excited. I have two dynamic speakers that are part of this Consuming Fire Ministry ministerial staff. I have Dr. Pastor Susan Flores and I have Dr. Vendetta Perry. God is going to do a great work with us today. I'm excited about what God is going to do. But before I get into that and after the message, we will have communion today. I want everybody to understand this is... This communion on this day was special because this is the night he had been betrayed. This is the time that Judas had already been turned over to Satan to betray him. But this is also ushering in the new covenant or the new testament in his blood that you and I are a part of that new covenant. Waiting as we've been taught by our famous uh, doctors, Dr. Curtis Dotson and Jalea Dotson, about when he comes back for his bride. We will be a part of that rapture. When he comes back for us, we pray that you will be a part of that as well. So glory be to God. Before we get into it, I'll open up with a quick word of prayer. I'll go into our announcements and I'm going to bring up our first speaker for this morning. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are, we glorify, we magnify, we come humbly before your throne this morning in the name of Jesus. We yield ourselves to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray on this day, let no flesh be glorified, God. Bring flesh, God. Bring haughtiness. Bring pride under total subjection. And bring total humility, God. Hide us behind your rugged, bloody cross. But stand your word up in us. Speak to us. Speak through us. But most of all, speak for us, God. And those that have an ear to hear, let them truly hear today what the Spirit is saying to the church, to the saint, as well as the sinner, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that the angels will be encamped about this service today. Those that are watching us via Facebook Live, uh, YouTube, and even those that are that are listening to via conference call. We pray for the anointing to come through the phones and through the cameras to touch their hearts and minds today, God. And if they don't know who Jesus is today, after the messages, they will come and ask, what must I do to be saved? Sanctify this place. Set it apart for your anointing in the name of Jesus. And as we go throughout the rest of this day, Heavenly Father, we pray that you will be glorified. And we who are the sheep of your pasture shall continue to be edified. Release an anointing today. That will destroy the yokes of the devil. He's been defeated and he's still a defeated foe. And we thank you for your victory, for conquering death, Hades, and the grave. And now we have eternal life through you. We give you all honor. We yes. give you all the glory. Thank we you. give you all the praise. Ha! In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Before we do, let me just get these announcements. Once again, if you are able... I want to thank all of you who support Consuming Fire Ministries International, even our CFMI family, through your tithes, through your offerings. We are very appreciative for your sowing. We thank you for all that you do, your financial gifts, your praying gifts. But we want to help you to continue to help us advance and enhance this gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the virtual as well as the secular world. And you can do that if you have the Zell app. My wife will put those uh, that information out on the page as she does 
But if you, if most of you know about the Zelle app, you can go to your Apple Store, your Play Store, and you'll download that, and all that information will be on there. Also, my Cash app. For those of you who know what my Cash app is, it's still a, a dollar sign Apostle twenty seven seventy five. That will also be on there as well. And Venmo, we do have Venmo as well. That's Apostle dash nineteen seventy five. And also, uh, we do have a new PO box, and we will get that information out. Uh, next week. We will have that out next week. But I also want to let you know every Thursday, 1130 a.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time, I'm a part of DMV Powered Gospel Radio Network and I have a show entitled The Fiery Furnace Broadcast. If you would like to be a part of that, you can tune in uh, to join the live broadcast to hear me teaching live. You will, down, you will call area code 206-806-9770. That's 206- 806-9770 where you will hear me and also if you want to go back to check my page and to leave a prayer request or you want to sow a seed as well you can go to uh, www.dmvpoweredgospelradio.net that if you want to go and see all the different people that are preaching and teaching on this network including myself and if you want to go back and re-catch the broadcast of mine that you missed you can go to http https uh, colon slash slash DMV Powered Gospel dot airtime dot pro. You will be able to go on as well and to catch that broadcast as well. And if you want to catch any of the messages that we are preaching on Sundays and our Wednesday night Bible studies, you can go to my YouTube page at Apostle Jarvis Hines. That is Apostle Jarvis Hines. You can go to our YouTube page and you will be able to hear these messages. And even with the same way you can sow, you can use those networks to sow into those as well. Anything you do, we pray for a hundredfold return and that God's blessings and favor and hand will be upon your life for sowing into good ground. Amen. Amen. Even though the building may be closed, we still have expenses and things. We have a website. We have other things, a church app. We have things that we still have to keep paying. Even though we're not in the building, we still have things we have to do. So I'm excited about it. Amen. So thank you for supporting us and praying for us. And may God continue to bless you richly in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. I'm excited about our first speaker this morning that's going to kick us off. Um, we're going into the resurrection. And, you know, normally, traditionally, we, we go with certain things. But I told them this year to flow as the Holy Spirit will lead them. They're, they're well-trained scholars. Uh, this Dr. Vendetta Perry is, is no stranger to the Indian Empire. She's known. She's a teacher. I mean, she's theatrical. Anything you want to put a part of it, she represents that. So I want to bring her up. And Facebook Live, CFMI family, I present to some and introduce to others our very own Dr. Vendetta Perry. Amen. As she comes with the first word this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you upon this Hines, First Amen. Lady, Amen. Dr. Susan, um, Minister Melanie and Minister uh, K-90, this man here, God bless you, man of God. And to all the Facebook family, I'm just excited today that this is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. I'm excited to Amen. celebrate that with you. Amen. Got saved at the age of 16 and didn't know anything about resurrection. But one day he found me when I was lost and brought me into the things of holiness. Amen. Pastor Apostle has already lifted us up in prayer, spoken the word of deliverance to us, and I'm going to go quickly into the word this morning. Those that have their Bibles, can you go with me to Matthew, the 28th chapter? Reading from the first verse, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Mm -hmm. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, 
for he is risen as he said. Yes. Come, come and see the place where the Lord laid. Yes. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and with great joy and ran, turning, uh, ran, bringing his disciples' word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them. As they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, rejoice. Saying, rejoice. I'm going to stop there. Amen. Hallelujah. The word that God has given me this morning is the resurrection power of love. Mm -hmm. Power to transform mm -hmm. a life of defeat, bound and chained by sin, mm -hmm. to victory. Mm -hmm. God is calling us to live a victorious life this morning. Mm -hmm. yes. And the Bible says in 1 John 4 and 9, In this, the love of God was made manifest mm -hmm. among us. The love of God is in the midst of us right now. You watching on Facebook or wherever you're watching, the love of God is in the midst of you right now. Amen. You don't have to feel lonely because God is with you. Amen. That God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Amen. And the Bible says in Acts 17, 28, for in him, in Christ, we live and move and have our being, for we are his offspring. Mm -hmm. I like that word. We are his offspring. We are the children of God. Amen. That's something to rejoice about. Amen. You're part of the family of God. You're part of the world family of God, and you're his child. You're his offspring. Amen. Amen. In the book of Hebrews, mm -hmm. the 10th chapter, Teach. and the 11th verse. It says, and every priest stands day after day performing repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Mm. But Jesus. Yes. Somebody yes. say, but Jesus. but Jesus. When he offered one time the sacrifice for sins, which was his blood, he sat on the right hand of God, the right hand of God, hallelujah, and since then, he has been making his enemies his footstool. Hallelujah. For by one sacrifice, he made perfect those that are being made holy. Yes. He made perfect by one sacrifice. The high priest used to sacrifice the pure blood of a lamb, the pure blood of an animal yearly. And then the other priest went into the temple daily. But it was not enough to atone for the sins of the people. Now, on the crucifixion night, hallelujah, on the day of his crucifixion, Pilate was confused. He tossed and turned whether or not he should have Christ crucified. Yes. And his wife had a prophetic dream telling him, I haven't slept all night thinking about that man, Jesus. That man is innocent. Set him free. And Pilate had to make a decision. But the crowd was being started by the chief priests. And they said, crucify Christ. So he put Barabbas mm -hmm. and he put Jesus in front of the crowd. Mm -hmm. For them to make a decision. Because one had to be set free and one had to pay the price. Yeah. And the crowd said, Barabbas set him free. They thought it was for Jesus' bad. But all things work together for the good for them that love the Lord yeah. and are called according to his purpose. But Barabbas was set free. He was a murderer and a thief. But his blood wasn't good enough Come on. to be sacrificed for the sins of the people. Yeah. He could not make atonement for us so it was the will of God. Right. And when they said crucify Christ, they wanted him to be painfully hurt. They whipped him with a whip, and that whip had glass and nails on it. So every time they whipped his body, touched his back with that whip, and tore the flesh off of him. Come on, greater love had no one that they would lay. 
laid down their life for their brethren. Jesus laid down his life for us. We're talking about the power of God. Hallelujah. The resurrected power of the love of God to transfer a life that's been bound by sin, chained by sin, to victory. And as he walked towards the Agatha Hill, he could barely walk. For taking the beating and the spitting and the way people talked about him. But he had that cross on his back. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. Because he loves us. We're part of his DNA. Yes. People search all over the world. Looking for love and they never find it. Because they keep on looking for love in the wrong place. But I'm telling you, if you're in the house of God today. If you're in the will of God today. You're in the right place. Don't leave. Don't leave. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. And when he got to the cross, they nailed his hands. Can you imagine having your hands nailed? And they nailed his feet. And they just hung them there. And they didn't care about him. And they mocked him. And they said, if you be the son of God, come down and deliver yourself. And there was another person on the cross, a criminal, and he knew that this was Christ, the Son of God. And he said, remember me when you get to paradise. Yes. And after the suffering, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When people hate you, they know not what they do. They don't know who you are. They don't know the living God is in you. Hallelujah. And finally, Jesus. On that cross, Father, it is finished. Huh. But where did Jesus go? Hmm. He went to Hades. Hey. He went to the region of the dead. Oh, Hallelujah. On. He went to a holding place where sinners was in Hades, like the, uh, the, the rich man. And then you can also see Lazarus, the beggar. He was in paradise. And it was a gulf in between them. So when Jesus descended into the earth, he was in Hades. He went to the paradise part and he talked to the Old Testament saints. Oh, Hallelujah. Say that. And after three days, three days, he rose again. Hallelujah. And when he left, death wins your sting. Death ain't got no sting. Hallelujah. Yes. Death wins your victory. Death didn't have no victory because Jesus paid the price to set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, now, Mary Magdalene, mm. she was a woman that Jesus had cast several demons out of. Mm -hmm. And the other Mary that went to the tomb, it is said she is believed to be the other Lazarus sister who had died and Jesus had woes him again. But when Jesus raised that Lazarus again, it wasn't from mortality to immortality. It was from mortality to mortality. Yeah. Jesus is the only one who was wow. ever raised uh, immediately at that time from mortality to immortality because yeah. he was the son of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when he was raised, he became the first fruit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because in the Old Testament, they had a... a a festivity, a festivity that they celebrated, and it was called the Feast of the First Fruits. Hallelujah. And at that time, hallelujah, what they did was they planted barley and they planted <laughs> wheat. Yes. But the barley harvest was raised first, it matured first. The wheat was a little harder to grow, okay? But that barley harvest, it raised first. And the requirement of the high priest, hallelujah, the requirement of the high priest was to take that, take that shepherd body, hallelujah, take it up in the air. And when he took it, he waved it like this. Ooh, he waved it like this. He waved it, and then God accepted that barley. That barley represented Christ. And, and after God accepted it, it became a sweet smelling aroma, it became a sweet smelling sacrifice in the nostrils of God because sin stinks in the nostrils of God and he cannot tolerate it in his presence. But that barley harvest represented Christ, the first fruit. And after God accepted the first fruit, then the rest of the harvest was blessed and it was deemed kosher. Not 
chain. Every chain that had us bound. Bound by sin. Chained by sin. Defeated without hope. Got you. Come on, God work it. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and the first verse, he said, bear for the imitators. Of God as dear children. Come on, you got his DNA. Come on. You, you're part of Christ. You, you got his genetics. He said, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. Come on, when I walked in here today, I felt so much in love. Everyone greeted me. Pastor Susan, Dr. Susan greeted me. Apostle Hines greeted me. First Lady agreed, agreed, greeted me. Emmanuel it greeted me. Hallelujah. And he said, he offered himself as an offering. That was that harvest offering that he offered himself for us. Hallelujah. And sacrifice to God. And that harvest offering became a sweet smelling aroma. Now, first, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15. It says, now thanks unto God who always leave us or leads us in a triumphal procession. Come on, who leading you this morning? Christ is leading you. He paid the price for your salvation. He atoned for your sins. So he's the leader of your triumphal possession. What this triumphal possession means? That means you're a winner. Mm. That means you are a winner. You already won the race of life. And Christ is at the finish line on the, on the side zone of God on his right hand side. And who is he waiting for? He's waiting for you. And he's waiting for me. Yes. Hallelujah. And through us, through you and me, he diffuses or he releases the fragrance of God in every place. Not to one, we're the fragrance of death. But to the other, we are the perfume. We are the aroma of the almighty God. I'm so glad, hallelujah, for Resurrection Sunday. I'm so glad that he has counted me into this race of believers who will carry his fragrance throughout the world. And what are we hoping for? You see, Christ was the first resurrection. And if there was a first resurrection, you better believe there's going to be a second resurrection. And because of that, I'm looking forward to the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. For the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we will remain to be caught up in the middle of the air. And therefore, we shall be with him forever. And I'm going to end with this. God is waiting on you. God is waiting on you. And he's yeah. waiting on you to bring you into eternally with him. I had a dream about two weeks ago. And in this dream, as I end, I was in heaven. I was in the heavenlies. And I looked and I saw two big doors. And I saw a man walking through the door. And I started running. And as I was running, I was like, God, don't forget about me. Oh, God, don't forget about me. And I'm running to the two doors. But when I got to the two doors, the doors closed. And I was stunned. I'm like, I am not going to leave here till God open that door. I don't care about these other people talking to each other. I'm going to stand right here and do an all to stand till Christ open up that door and let me in. And the doors open for me. And as I stepped into the presence of an almighty God, an angel came on my right side. He had the Lamb's book of life. He looked at me, walked past me, and said, Bendetta, 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 I'm so glad you made it. Hallelujah. Come on and answer the heaven of rejoicing with you this morning. Hallelujah. So glad that you made it. So glad that you're part of the world family of God. God bless you. Amen. 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 Come on, thanks to God. Give her another hand, praise. God is good, y'all. God is good. Mm -hmm. She showed you that barley and that wheat, that, she, that we are the first, Christ is the first fruit. And we are also a part of that, of that sheaf that she waved. And the wheat are those of the other tribulation and Old Testament saints. You learn that stuff when you look beyond just what it symbolizes, but you go in debt with what it means. So glory be to God. God bless you, Dr. Pastor Vendetta Perry. I'm excited what God is doing in CFMI. He's doing, he's doing the resurrection even within our own ministry. So I'm excited 
And as an apostle of God, our job is to help raise people up. You have to allow people to have a voice. They're not going to be like you. They're not going to talk like you. But you're to build them up to be what God would have them to be. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. be to God. With that being said, I'm also elated and I'm excited about my assistant. She is, she, she's been faithful with me. Uh, I mean, uh, she not only is my friend and not only a part of this ministry, but she's my teacher at our school, Wordwise Institute of Eschatology. And she's always on me about things, my writing and, and things of that nature, getting me to do my research and go in debt with the word of God, and I'm just grateful for her. She is the founder of Love Ministries, and she is my assistant. And at this time, I want to introduce to some, and I want to present the others, our very own Dr. Pastor Susan Flores. I mean, give a hand praise as she comes to give us the second word. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I already did it. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Dr. Vendetta, I love how the Holy Spirit just flows because I'm going to come up here and you've said a bunch of stuff and you, you're going to see what God has to say in the same format. So I, I just love the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you have your Bibles, we are going to start in Luke chapter 24 at verse 1. And it says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Amen. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran into the tomb, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Amen. 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 Take your time. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. What I want to do is, um, as the Apostle says, I am a teacher, so I'm going to teach you this morning. Amen. 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 First of all, we need to understand that the resurrection of Jesus is the single most event that sets Christianity apart from every other religion. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's it's not just one of our foundational doctrinal beliefs. It is the thing we hang our hat on as Christians. Yeah. Um, Buddha's in the tomb. Uh, Muhammad is in the tomb. On, but our Lord, he is alive. Amen. The tomb is empty. Amen. And because of this, Jesus is not just our Lord and Savior. He is not just a great story, but he is our hope and our future. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go quickly through the events. Um, uh, Pastor Vendetta went a little bit more into some detail, so I'm going to go quickly through the events that led up to what we just read in Luke 24. And the message that God gave me is, but he didn't stop there. Mm. Amen. 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 He didn't Amen. stop there. So yes. in Luke 22 and um, other Gospels, which you guys can read later, um, we see in the beginning of Luke 22, Judas Iscariot, he's the disciple that went and sold Jesus for 30 shekels of silver. He betrayed him. Jesus knew that Judas was going to do this. Yes. He, did. Um, he also... Uh, celebrated the Passover feast, and during that Passover feast is when Jesus instituted our, what we call communion. 
It's the Lord's Last Supper. And during this uh, feast, Jesus washed the disciples' feet, including Judas, who was going to betray him. Jesus instituted our new covenant with the shedding of his blood. He told his disciples also during this time that he was going to have to be crucified. And don't worry, I'm coming back. Hmm. Okay? So, like I said, I'm going pretty quickly because um, when I get to the end, I'll get a little bit more into it. Amen. So, God, um, during this time, Jesus promised his disciples that they would rule and reign with him in his kingdom and that they would be judges over the 12 tribes of Israel. And yes. we'll see this in the book of Revelation. Yes. Um, this is also the time when Jesus told Peter he was going to betray him three times. So, all this has happened at this time. Passover celebration, what we call the Last Supper, and Jesus knew all of this, but he didn't stop there. Jesus then went into the Garden of Gethsemane, and we know that Jesus prayed fervently in that garden, and he took James, John, and Peter, told them to watch and pray with him, and Jesus prayed fervently. He went back. The disciples were asleep. He told him, I need you to watch and pray. Prayed fervently. Jesus went back. The disciples were asleep again. Jesus went back and he prayed again. And this time when he prayed, he asked God to let the cup pass him by. Mm -hmm. And that cup was all the sins that he knew he would be taking on his body. Mm -hmm. All the sins of the past. Amen. All the, the sins of the present. Mm -hmm. And all the sins the of the future of all mankind. Amen. Right. Amen. So he knew not only was it going to be a weight that would be unbearable, it would cause him for the first time ever to be separated from his father because God cannot be in the presence of sin. No. So he knew all of that, but you know what? He didn't stop there. He went on and said, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but your, your will be, be done. done. And he went back to his disciples who were still asleep and he said, don't even worry about it. The time has come. Yes, it and he was arrested. Mm. After he was arrested, he was blindfolded. He was beaten. He was spit on. He mm. was mocked. But he didn't stop there. Mm. He could have called down armies from heaven mm. to intercede and it would have stopped. But he said no. Why? Because like Dr. Benderi said just a few minutes ago, he loved us so much. Yes. It's his love that kept him going. His love for us. His love for God. And the knowing that that was his purpose. He knew all along that he was purposed to come and die for us. Amen. So yeah. Amen. the guards took him from Pontius Pilate to Herod, yes. back to Pontius Pilate, Come on. like he was a ping pong ball. He was going back and forth and back and forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pilate was like, look, I don't see anything in this man that would make me have to make the decision that he should be crucified. Mm -hmm. But they called for him to be crucified. Mm -hmm. And Pilate said, well, I'll tell you what, let me just go chasing him. Let me just send him to get beaten and that should suffice. Uh -huh. So Christ, as um, Dr. Bendele, uh Perry just said, he wasn't just beaten like with a whip. It was called a cat of nine tails. That's right. And on this cat of nine tails were shards of glass, yes. shards of metal, yes. and nails. That's right. And they took it and they hit him yes. 39 times. Mm -hmm. But he didn't stop there. Because had he stopped there, Isaiah 53 and 5 wouldn't have come to pass. Uh, that by the stripes of Jesus, we ooh, are healed. Amen. Healed. We have Jesus. our healing Thank today you, because of You're the stripes that he Jesus. took. And he knew that. See, one of the things Jesus knew is that he had to fulfill the scriptures. He had to fulfill the scriptures that talked about him. And that was one of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So he didn't stop there at the beating. He got up. Yes. They put a robe on him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. 
And it's not like the little pictures you see. These, this crown of thorns was made with thick wood and it was so sharp on the ends that when they put it on his head, it pierced him down to the bone of his skull. They pushed it and beat it on his head until it penetrated his flesh. He did this for us. Yes. And he didn't stop there. Mm -hmm. yes. He Hallelujah. had to carry his own cross. Mm -hmm. And as he carried it, because of his weakness, he fell. Mm -hmm. And he got back up. Yes. And this is when they told um, the... Um, I need to get his name right. Simon, the Cyrenian, that he needed to help Jesus carry his cross mm -hmm. so that he could make it to Golgotha, where he mm -hmm. could be crucified. Mm -hmm. So Jesus mm -hmm. took that cross. He laid down on that cross, and he let them nail him to the cross. He let them nail him to the cross. This was not something that they... <laughs> God, they did. He, if he had not laid his life down, if he had not been the one to allow them, because remember, th he's still God. Yes. yes, he was in flesh, but he's still God. Mm -hmm. And he still could have called the angels down. Mm -hmm. And he did not. He mm -hmm. let them nail him to the cross. But he didn't stop there. Even while he was hanging between the two criminals, he showed love and compassion by forgiving the one criminal that asked him for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. He even cried out to his father, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But he didn't stop there. No. They pierced his side after he died to make sure he was dead. They mm -hmm. pierced his side. The water and the blood flowed. And we know from um, doctor's reports and stuff that they say that the water was proof that the pericardium that surrounds the heart was pierced. Right. So there is no question that he died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. Then we see Joseph of Arimathea come and ask for Christ's body. Now Joseph mm -hmm. was one of the Jewish council. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now according to um, Matthew... He's the only one that was not in agreement with the rest of the council that, Jew, that um, Jesus be crucified. So here's this Jewish councilman who was very, very wealthy, by the way, yes. that came and took our Lord's body. Because had he not claimed it, it would have been thrown in a pit. Uh -huh. that's, that's what happened. When, when bodies weren't claimed, if you didn't have money to be buried in a tomb, they threw the body in the pit, and that was the end of it. But God sent this Joseph of Arimathea to take the Lord's body and they wrapped him in linen they put spices and oils on him and they placed him in the tomb but he didn't stop there Come on. Yeah. so we get to our story right now and we have these women who arrived at the tomb mm -hmm. and when they got there they saw it was empty <laughs> <laughs> it was empty now, remember at the beginning, I told you that the resurrection is the single most event that sets Christianity apart from mm -hmm. other religions. Yeah. So, because it's so um, much that we, I, I would like to say, hang our hat on. Because it's so important to us as, a, as believers, the resurrection is so important to us. I think it's important for us to also prove that it's real. Ooh, we need to prove that that resurrection was real yeah. because we're going to come across a lot of unbelievers mm -hmm. that are going to say well how do you know that Jesus resurrected well now you're going to get a little class in apologetics so first of all we're going to look at our proof and our proof uh, we'll look in verses uh, 1 through 3 and then again in 9 through 11 we see that women were the witnesses of the empty tomb. Hmm. They were the first yeah. witnesses of the empty tomb. Mm -hmm. And this is significant because women were the low people on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a voice. 
They were not allowed to talk of, um, about the scriptures. They were not allowed to teach the scriptures. Mm -hmm. They were so insignificant. And I think it's amazing how Christ takes what people say is foolish mm -hmm. and what he think, who he thinks is insignificant, and he says, I'm going to put you in the front, and they're going to listen to you. Hmm. And so this is what happened. He had the women, which we say are our first evangelists, were women, yes, by the way. Um, he put them in the forefront. And what's so significant about this is that for the Jews to acknowledge the women saying this would have been an embarrassment. But all of the Gospels say it was the women who came to the empty tomb Amen. first. All of, the say that. all of the Gospels say that. So that's one of our first points of validity. Um, we see this also in John 20, 16 through 18. Um, and also what makes our Gospel true of Jesus' resurrection is all the witnesses the witnesses who saw Christ after they saw him crucified. Everybody saw him crucified. And like I just said, you know that he died because that pericardium was punctured. And other thing about that is the Roman soldiers, they would have been killed had they not made sure he died. So they made sure he was dead. Okay. So in Mark 16, 12, and 14, we see Jesus appear to the two disciples. In John 20, verses 24 through 29, Jesus appeared to Doubting Thomas. Now, Doubting Thomas was the disciple that said, I am not going to believe that Christ is risen unless I can touch the hands and his scars. And what did Jesus do? He said, come on, look, look Thomas. Here's, here's the scars. Touch them. And then we see um, outside of our own Bible, skeptics, mm -hmm. people who do, did not even believe in Christ, um, writing about the resurrection. We know that he also appeared to more than 500 other people. And one of the famous historians, Jewish historians, uh, Flavius Josephus, uh -huh. writes extensively about Christ's death and his resurrection. Amen. So we know that this is true, that he did resurrect because we have the, the um, evidence to prove that he did. Now, I want to talk about three points that are significant to the resurrection. First of all, the resurrection proves all the Old Testament scriptures regarding our Messiah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you just a couple. Psalm 16, 8 through 11, which we know was written by uh, David. We have Isaiah 53, which I told you just a little bit about. And one of the stories um, that we just learned in our eschatology class is the story of Jonah, which is a representative uh, foreshadowing of Christ's resurrection. And even Jesus himself, in Matthew 12, related his story of his resurrection to the story of Jonah. The second point of the significance of the resurrection is that it proves Jesus is who he said he was. We see this in verses 4 through 8, when the, when the angels reminded the women that Christ is who he said he was. He said he was going to raise from the dead. You guys remember that? Yes. That's what he was telling them when they went to that empty tomb. Yeah. We also see this in Matthew 20, verses 17 through 19, and Mark 8 and 31. And as Pastor Dr. Bendera said earlier, Jesus is our first fruit. So the third significance of the resurrection is it is our hope and our promise for our future with Christ. Yes. He was the first fruit. He came first, and as she so eloquently pointed out, that means there's going to be more. Because if there's one, there's got to be others. Otherwise, it would have said he was the only, not the first. So we see this in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 through 21. 
where she explained earlier, we're going to be raptured. That's our resurrection. But the beautiful thing about this rapture is it takes place before the tribulation period. Right. Yeah. And I, I tell Apostle this all the time. I feel so grateful that I was born in this time. Yes. We could have been Old Testament saints. <laughs> we could be tribulation saints. But God made us the church. We are the bride of Christ. We get to be raptured up out of here and be with our bridegroom. We don't have to suffer through that tribulation period. Jesus is our pattern. He shows us what resurrection is going to look like. He returns in a glorified body. We're going to get glorified bodies when we get yes. resurrected. Amen. We see that in um, Romans 6, 8 through 11. We also see that he is our hope in 1 Peter 1 through 3. And eternal life in John 3, 16. But he didn't stop there. Mm -hmm. Right now, according to Romans 8 and 34, he is interceding on our behalf, Hallelujah. seated at the Hallelujah. right hand of the Father. Yes. He is there as our lawyer, That's right. advocate. When we're messing up down here, he's the one that says, wait a minute, Lord, wait a minute. See my blood? It covers that there. <laughs> They're all right. They're all right. They're messing up a little bit, but they're all right. That's all right. <laughs> He's our advocate and our high priest. In John 14, 1 through 3, we see that Jesus is preparing a place for us. Yes. So when we get raptured, we have a place to go. And that place, we find out in Revelation chapter 4, we see the church is raptured. We see that place starts at the Bema seat, mm -hmm. which is the judgment seat of Christ. That is where all of us get to receive not judgment for sins, because remember, as Dr. Vendetta just so eloquently explained, we are free from sin because Jesus paid the price. Amen. We get to receive rewards, rewards for doing what God called us to do while we were here. So we get crowns. And so after that, see, because he didn't stop there at us getting rewards and crowns. After that, we get to have a wedding. We get to be married to our bridegroom. And that is when he, we get to go to the place he has prepared for us. In front of his, he's going to present us to the Father. Amen. He's going to present us holy and acceptable because of what he did. But he didn't stop there. In Revelation chapter 22, we get to be in our final destination, Amen. which is at eternal peace, side by side with Christ for all eternity. So understand that there is so much more that Jesus did on the cross and so much more than the resurrection because he didn't stop there. Mm -hmm. And for that, I am grateful. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One more time, give Dr. Pastor Susan Flores a hand. Praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, my God. God is, God, is, God is so good. And uh, I'm just honored to have these women of God and people of God who who want to learn and want to know yes. about the resurrection. Many times we preach these events, but we don't expound for you to understand the importance or the purpose of the resurrection. And I'm so elated for both of them uh, coming up and, and letting God use them today in a mighty, mighty way. And I, I, su I submit to you, people of God, and I suggest to not just hear the message. Let the message become a part of you. That's yeah. the whole purpose of hearing the teaching yeah. and the preaching of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I am excited. I'm elated to close us out today. And Hallelujah. as I prepare to end us today, I, I had a lot to struggle with growing up and getting saved. I, my great pastor, uh, Pastor Daniel Keith Williams, my apostle, Ricky Park Barnett, 
men and I heard this bloody gospel preached every year about the tomb and about the tomb and he got up and he got up and and but I understand there has to be more than him just getting up and I think we need to really understand the purpose of him getting up not just for you to, to live but for you to continue where he left off many of us we, we, we understand that, but we get stagnated. We get in our religiosity. We get into our formats and our traditions, and we make things become custom. But we don't understand it needs to go beyond our own customs and our own dogmatical boxes and things that we try to put a God in who's not even limited or illogical to our understanding. So I want to make sure today that I end this the way God had me to end it, going through and so many topics and thoughts I could go with, but today, I want to challenge us today as we prepare to bring this to a close. So real quickly, if you have your Bibles, your, your Palm Pilots, your, 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 your tablets, your cell phones, because we just don't use paper anymore. But if you do have your paper Bible, use that. Meet me in the book of Acts of the Holy Spirit. Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Holy Spirit. I want to go a different route today, but it's going to tie in. You'll see. Acts uh, chapter 1. Uh, beginning at verse number one, and we'll conclude the reading at verse number eight. Uh, reading from the New American Standard Bible. Whatever translation you have, you can follow along with us. Acts chapter one, beginning at verse number one. And the Bible records this intelligence. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day, verse 2, when he was taken up to heaven after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. Verse 3, to, to those he also presented himself alive after his sufferings by many convincing proofs, approving to them over a, appearing to them rather, over a period of 40 days and speaking of things concerning the Basilius, which is the kingdom in the Greek, of God. Verse 4, gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what he had the Father promised, which he said, you have heard of me. For John baptized, that word baptized is the Greek word baptizo. It means to immerse or swallow up in with water. But you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? Verse 7, he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the epochs or the seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority. And our concluding verse, verse number 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. See, many of us stop there. But let's look at it. And you shall be my witnesses. Both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the even end of the remote part of the earth. Glory be to God. I want to use for a thought for the next few minutes that the Holy Spirit will lead me. I want to use for this thought. The resurrection is not stagnant but progressive. The resurrection is not stagnant but progressive. In other words, stagnation means something that stops flowing or it stops moving. Progressive means it continues to move and it's not stagnant to one specific place or location. So the resurrection is not stagnant, but it's progressive. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, men and women of God, as we celebrate and commemorate one of the greatest days, times, and events that has ever been recorded in history of the, of the world, in our lives known as the resurrection. The meaning of the resurrection of our Lord means our Savior being raised from the dead in his physical and spiritual body. Hallelujah. He was raised from the dead. Now, there were other resurrections, as both of our, our pastors just taught you, that prior resurrections, but they had to die again. Mm -hmm. But this one who arose lives forever. He has not died, but he is alive today. But my concern is, people of God, is we have made this more of a historical lesson than a continuing reality. In other words, what the resurrection has done for us over these 2,000 years. And what have you done as a believer since you heard the resurrection story? 
And how have you become, or how have you become since the resurrection? In other words, every Easter Sunday we hear about him getting up and he got out the tomb and he's not there anymore. We've heard that he's now at the right hand making intercession for us and he goes to prepare a place for us. We know this, but my question today is what are you doing with the story that you have heard? How has his resurrection affected your life? What have you done since he got up? See, it's one thing for somebody to get up for you, but what are you doing in exchange or return since he's resurrected? It's not just a memorial because everybody knows he got up, but what you fail to understand, he didn't just get up to get up. He got up so you can get up to continue where he left off. Come on, somebody. Follow me. A lot of us have to understand that Jesus didn't just die just to die. He had to pay a penalty that you and I from our father, Adam and Eve, caused him. So he had to come and pay the price, watch this, for past, present, and future sins. All the sins of the world were imputed or placed upon him. So his resurrection is more than just his death. It's now his eternal life. And you and I represent that life that he gave. So what have you done and what have you become since his resurrection? Watch this. Or who have you become since the resurrection? We will see this morning, people of God, that the resurrection of Jesus Jesus Christ is not stagnant, but progressive. It is not stagnant, but progressive. Glory be to God. People of God, after the resurrection, Jesus remained on earth 40 days and ministered to his disciples. Watch this. He had already opened their minds to understanding the Old Testament message about himself. Now Jesus is walking in his immortal body. He's walking amongst them. He's ministering, which means he's serving and teaching and explaining things concerning the kingdom. They have physically seen him in his body. He appeared to his disciples who have now become his apostles and he's walking with them telling them things about the ruleship of God. Under the Old Testament, what it means people of God, that Jesus has fulfilled those scriptures concerning his resurrection from the dead. Now they have living proof of what he said he's actually walking out in front of them. I'm going to press my claim just bear on with me. But there were other lessons people of God they needed to learn. Before they could launch out in their new ministry, Jesus appeared and disappeared during those 40 days. He was amongst them and then he would come back amongst them, teaching things pertaining to the kingdom. Watch this. And the believers never knew when he might show up because he could show up at any given moment. Let me give you an example. When Thomas said, as Dr. Susan said, unless I see him, I will not believe him. And Jesus appears and says, peace be unto you. He says, look at my hands, look at my feet. And he said, my Lord and my God. He said, because you've seen me, you believe. But blessed are they which have not seen me, yes. but yet believe me. Glory be to God. Watch this. It was excellent preparation for the church because the days were soon coming when he would no longer be on the earth to instruct them personally. The day was coming after his ascension that he was getting ready to send back the Allos Parocletus. What is the Allos Parocletus? That is the Holy Ghost. That is the one that was going to be imparted into us to keep us in remembrance and continue the message of his death, his suffering, but most of all, his resurrection. Yes. Glory be to God. Here it is. That he would no longer be with them to instruct them personally. Uh, but we people of God, as believers today, uh, never knew when our Lord may return. Uh, so our situation is somewhat similar to theirs. Uh, we don't know when Jesus is coming back. Uh, he says no one knows the day or the hour. Uh, but one thing that he tells us to do, uh, he tells us to be prepared uh, and be ready when he does come back to rapture us. Uh, see, a lot of times, some people have to get ready. Uh, I've learned this as a kid. Uh, my daddy used to say, get ready, I'm coming to the house. Uh, and I would think because he wasn't there, he wasn't coming. And all of a sudden, when I'm getting out of bed, he done popped up and ready to go. See, that's how Jesus is. You have to be prepared yes. because you don't know when he's coming back to bring you back with him. So we must be prepared. Here it is, people of God. The Lord taught them several important lessons during this time of the special ministry, but we will examine three of them this morning. There were several principles he taught during this special time of his ministry on earth, but we will examine three. 
the first thing we will, deserve, we will discover this morning, number one, the reality of his resurrection. The resurrection was a reality. It was not fictional. No one made the story up. It's in your history books that he resurrected. It's in your Biblios, your Bible that we read. And it's also in you and I because we bear witness of his resurrection. Glory be to God. In verse 3a, some of the believers may have had their doubts 40 days before. But there could be no question now that Jesus had indeed been raised from the dead. Forty days prior after, G after Peter reveals that Jesus, watch this, is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus begins to talk about his death. He begins to tell them how he must go to Jerusalem to be betrayed. He tells them how he must suffer the hand of the Sanhedrin priesthood of Caiaphas and Ananias and all the things. But they were so amazed because prior to that, no one had knew his purpose uh, until Peter got the Holy Spirit through the revelation that Jesus uh, is the Christ the son of the living God uh, so now 40 days prior they didn't believe it but now what they didn't believe uh, they now see the evidence walking before them uh, isn't that like God uh, God sometimes Emmanuel have to make proof uh, to show you that what I said was real uh, you didn't believe it before uh, but now you see the same body you saw hung on the cross uh, spikes drove in his feet a crown of thorns on his head, his back ripped to refusiveness, his face beaten so unrecognizable. Now you see him walking in his immortal body, full of glory and power and dominion. You now see him walking as he said. Watch this being raised from the dead. Watch this. He was raised from the dead to strengthen their faith. He gave them many infallible proofs. What Luke did not explain, we know that when Jesus met his disciples, he invited them to touch his body. He even ate before them. So he gave them proof that it was so. He walked amongst them. He allowed them to touch him in his new immortal body. A body that's immune to COVID-19. A body that's immune to cancer. A body that's immune. Oh my God. A, a body that's removed. They got a chance to see him in his immortal imperishable, incorruptible body. He allowed them to touch him and to eat with him. Glory be to God before them. What other proofs he gave them? They were convincing. Faith in his resurrection was important to the church because of their own spiritual power depended on it. They must have pistis or pistols. They must have assurance, Pastor Bendetta, hope Pastor Susan, and confidence in the resurrection. If there be no resurrection, you and I are still lost in sin, we're still in transgression, and we're on our way to a burning Gehenna where there will never be life. But because of what Jesus did, you and I have life in that more eternally. Glory be to God. Also, people of God, the message of the gospel involves the truth of the resurrection. And if Jesus were dead, the church would be speechless. If Jesus was dead, then we would be made liars and we're preaching a false evidence. Oh but God. because of proof of him being witnessed by over 500 people and staying on earth 40 days after his resurrection is proof that he has risen like he said. Glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. Finally, the, the Jewish position was that the disciples had stolen Jesus' body from the tomb. Matthew 28, 11 through 15. And the believers have to be able to refute this as they witness to the nation. They have to prove that Jesus' body wasn't taken. Remember, the Roman soldiers that were protecting the tomb were killed because Jesus got up. No one stole his body. God resurrected him by resurrection power. As he stated that he would get up. So they had to conjure up a lie. Isn't it when truth come out, there's always skeptics and counterfeiters that will try to prove or disapprove our point is invalid or that it's not truthful. But yeah. because they had no proof that it wasn't true, they had to conjure up something to make sure that it was not. Glory be to God. These believers, people of God, were chosen to be special witnesses of Christ's resurrection. And watch this. That was the emphasis in their ministry. Most of the people of in Jerusalem, people of God, knew that Jesus of Nazareth had been crucified. They witnessed on that Friday him being hung up on the cross and beaten and dropped up a hill called Golgotha, we know as Calvary. They saw him mutilated and embarrassed. They made fun of him. They taught 
of him and said, if you be the Christ, come off that cross. See, it's one thing for people to see it for themselves. It's another thing for the critics to really understand that what you didn't want to see, you now see in it. What you really didn't expect for him to do, he's done what he has said. Glory be to God. But they did not know, people of God, that he had been raised from the dead by their words, their walk, and their mighty works. The believers told the world that Jesus was alive. The sign was the sign of Jonah that Jesus had promised to the nation. Uh, the way that Jonah went down in the belly symbolizing Christ uh, being in Abraham's bosom in Sheol, uh, known as the place of the region of the dead. Uh, that he went down and let me get this straight, I'm going to kill this demon today. Uh, he did not go to hell. Uh, he did not need to go to hell. He's never been there. He never will go. Uh, he went to the place to preach to the old patriot saint. Uh, I feel like preaching today. Uh, he went to tell Abraham and Jacob and Samson and all of those that could not do anything until he came down uh, to let them know and it wasn't a preach message he let them know I reign I gained victory when I said it was finished it is done glory be to God of his belly his resurrection and his death, uh, which brings us to point number two. Uh, not only watch this now, we just talked about uh, the reality of his resurrection, right? Uh, the second thing we see this morning, uh, we see the coming of his kingdom. Uh, we see the coming of the kingdom, uh, the basilius, the rule ship, the realm. See, we think the kingdom is in an all out geographical space that we can't see. Uh, can I help somebody this morning while you got resurrection power? Uh, it's because the kingdom of God lives in you. Uh, that's how you're able to see God moving because of the fire. The kingdom represents you and I. Glory be to God. This refers to the reign of God over the hearts and lives of those who trusted in him. When you read the four gospels, you discover uh, that the apostles had a strong political view of the kingdom uh, and were especially concerned about their own position and privileges. Uh, in Acts 1 and 5, uh, they asked them, have you come uh, to restore the kingdom? Uh, Jesus said it's not for you because they were still caught up uh, because during this time period, people of God, the Romans were still in control uh, and they looked at Jesus now being victorious, uh, has come to restore Judea, Jerusalem back to its original state. But it was a bigger purpose than that. Yes. Jesus said it's not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father has put in his own hand. But he lets them know you shall receive power, dunamis power, dynamite miracle working power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So while you're looking at the political thing, let me go ahead and put a pen right there. While you're looking at who's Democrat, who's Independent, who's Republican, I'm looking at who's a Christ of Christ, who's a God of Christ. Who's a believer in the things pertaining to the kingdom and not this political system we call the world? Here it is, people of God. Here it is. Being loyal Jews, they long for the defeat of their enemies and the final establishment of the glorious kingdom under the rule of the king of the Messiah. But what they did not realize, people of God, that there must be a spiritual change in the hearts of the people. I can't do anything physically unless I first change you from within. Because if I don't change you from within, you will still hold my resurrection from a fleshly standpoint of view. So I have to come and do something spiritually to change you internally so we can see the work outside of you externally. Glory be to God. Jesus, people of God, did not rebuke them when they kept asking about the future Jewish kingdom. After all, he opened their minds, watch this, to understand the scriptures so they knew what they were asking him but God has not revealed his timetable to us and it's futile for us to speculate the important thing is this is not to be curious about the future but to be busy in the present sharing the message of God's spiritual kingdom this is another emphasis of the book of Acts so in other words it's not so much to be concerned about the future but we must now be in the present preaching his resurrection until he comes so what are you saying about in other words, you need to get busy. You need to be about your father's business now letting people understand that this resurrection has more to do with your eternal state than just for you being here. What you need to be telling people that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. What you need to be telling people to prepare yourself because no man knows the day of the hour when the Son of Man is coming. But when he does come, you need to be ready. Yes. When he comes, yeah. which brings us to our third point, 
Not only must we know the kingdom, but the power of his Holy Spirit. We must know the power of the Holy Spirit. John baptized and had announced a future baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we see, and now that prophecy would be fulfilled. Jesus had also promised the coming of the Spirit. He tells you, indeed, John baptized you with water unto repentance. But the, even John said, but the one that's coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Let me clear up that word fire. That word fire there is the word poor, P-O-O-R. It's not a fire of purification. It's a fire of judgment because the fire he was talking about was when the Pharisees came to hear him in the wilderness or see him. They were not coming to see John. They were coming to receive a word. Can I block the people today? We got people that want to run to hear a word. But long as that word will not purify you, it's a good word. But when it's a word to tell you to get your focus back to receive the one, it's a major problem. Can I pump, can I can I put a pen here today? Can I feel this? I'm talking to you prophets that's telling people they're about to get houses and husbands and cars and booze and estates. But when their life ain't lined up together, they need to make sure that they receive him. Because if you seek ye first the kingdom, everything else will be added unto you. Amen. Here it is. It will be an endowment of power. For the disciples so that we would be able to serve the Lord and accomplish his will. John, people of God, has spoken about the Holy Spirit in fire. But Jesus, here it is. But Jesus said nothing about fire. Why? Because the baptism of fire has to do with future judgment. <laughs> That's why he didn't mention fire. When the nation of Israel will go through tribulation, the appearing of tongues of fire at Pentecost could not be termed as a baptism. The tongues was also a tongues to get the other nations to know the message about the one who just resurrected. That was the purpose of them hearing them speaking in their own tongues. Now, we know tongues for the believer edifies and builds up. But this tongue was an evangelistic tongue to let them know about the one who had risen. And that's why the 2,000 got saved, because they remember him hanging on the cross. They remember him healing their, their family members of leprosy. They remember him raising people from the dead. They remember him feeding two people with two fish and five barley loaves. That's why they knew who he was. And Acts 1 and 8, people of God, is the key verse. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon on you so that you can be a witness to me both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the other parts of the earth. In other words, to begin with, it explains the power of the church comes from the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come from man. So the power that you and I, whether you an evangelist, a deacon, a deaconess, elder, prophetess, a chief apostle, apostle, whatever you may be, the power don't come from you. The power comes from the one that Jesus left us, which is the adult's Herocletos, the Holy Ghost is the one that gives you the power to proclaim his message. Glory be to God. And we see in Zechariah 4 and 6 he tells us it is not by might nor by power but it's by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. God's people experience a repeated feelings of the spirit as they face new opportunities and obstacles. He give you more of his feeling to deal with the obstacles and all of the all of the obscurity that you would deal with when you're going through for him. He gives you more power to carry out his message. Ordinary people were able to do extraordinary things because the Spirit of God was at work in their lives. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not a luxury. It is an absolute necessity. The Holy Ghost is not a luxury for you to just say, I'm saved and I'm filled. The Holy Ghost is not enough for you to just jump in your little corner in your church and sit with your little cute little apron across your knee and say, he's Shama Mahanda kick a mosquito. But the Holy Ghost gives you power to talk about the resurrected Christ to let people know that he ain't just died and he's just stopped flowing. He's still progressive in the lives of not only you, so when you leave here, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your great-great-great-great-grandchildren will remember the message that you told about the risen Christ. And as I come to a close, closing it says the witness is a key word in the book of Acts. It is used 29 times as either a verb or a noun. 
A witness, people of God, is somebody who tells what he has seen and heard. When you are a witness on the stand in the courtroom, the judge is not interested in your ideas or your opinion. He only wants to hear what you know. Our English word martyr comes from the Greek word translated witness. In other words, he don't care what you heard. He wants to know what you know. Here it is. And many of us as God's people have sealed their witness.